friend, I hope you're well. I am recording this on a magical date. It's the 22nd of the 2nd, 2022. So in angel numbers, that's 22222. And basically it means that it's the first, it's the only time that you're ever going to see this date in your lifetime. And it means that the fruits of your labour are starting to be noticed. Things are about to change for you. Now is a great time to put out there to the world what you want to get back, to go after your goals, to become the best version of yourself. And do you know what? Whether you're into angel numbers or not, and honestly, I'm not particularly into them, but I do love a little sign. I do love a little universe wink. And whether you're into them or not, it just is a good excuse to go after it today, to listen to this podcast and choose to feel the energy from it feel the magic from it and go and do something that will change your state change where you are in your life and change how you're feeling about things because if that's not a sign then I don't know what is to be honest and it's a brilliant reason to just go for it the second reason that I'm really excited to be with you today is that today is the first time this podcast is going to be on YouTube because I recently received a message on Instagram from a person who's followed me and she's been recommended to tap into the podcast and she messaged me and said I'm deaf is there any way that I can see a video of your podcast with subtitles and honestly I had never even thought about it I was ashamed to say that there was no way that she would be able to get the information that we're sharing on this and that's not what I want to be about that's not what I want to stand for I want to make sure that as many people are able to tap into the content on here as possible so what's the difference just pop it on YouTube and put some subtitles on the video and people can listen to it and people can watch it so Hopefully this is helpful for everyone and the only downside is that it means that when I am recording it in a car park or with my jammies on and my makeup on you can actually see me and you can see some of the faces that I pull when I'm actually talking to you but it's all good. If you're all right with that then so am I. So today I'm going to talk to you about your energy particularly as a parent. Now there's no better time to do this than today with it being a day for building your energy and the cosmic alignment of the the date that today is. But what I'm going to do is talk to you about the different senses that we have. So sight, sound, taste, feel and think about what we can do to build our energy, to build how we're feeling from those different elements just give it some kind of structure so sight number one if you are reading good stuff if you are reading things that build you up if you're reading things that fill you up then you're going to feel good if you're logging online first thing in the morning to instagram and you're scrolling and you're comparing yourself and you're watching other people's highlight reel you're thinking i'm not good enough I wish that I could do that with my kids. I feel like a rubbish mum. I feel like a rubbish business person. If only I could do all of these things, which actually you can't because you're a human being and not everyone can do. And whenever you see a post on Instagram, it's a tiny little section of that person's life. And there's so much going on behind the scenes that you have no idea about. So that's the first thing. Just be careful about what you're taking on board, what you're actually seeing, what you're reading, what you're taking into your mind. Also have a think about your environment. There's so much to be said for what you actually see in your environment. I am, I'm basic. <laughs> when I see surfaces that are not basic, as in they're not clear, it messes with my mind, it messes with my head. And right now, actually, I'm looking on my office desk and it's it's got stuff on it and it's actually distracting me as I talk. So my next task will be to deal with that clutter because although it seems insignificant it seems like it's not a big deal it's actually visual stimulation that you are seeing all over the place when you're trying to take on a task so it can actually be really important just to get rid of some stuff and make yourself feel a little bit less stimulated in, in that department and also delegate stuff like that delegate housework when you can um, I mean, that's a number one reason to take on a side business, a side hustle, so that you can get a cleaner, so that you can delegate some housework. Because if you're spending hours of your life doing that kind of stuff, then why not spend hours of your life building a business and then pay someone to do it? It really makes sense. It took me a long time to get my head around that and to delegate anything, to be honest. I used to very much be of the opinion that 
do you know what if I'm gonna delegate I would be as well just doing it myself because it takes me just as long to show someone how to do it than it does myself but things like cleaning you know it doesn't really it's it's not a science so people can help you do that and I have so much gratitude for the gorgeous lady who comes and cleans my house and she's become a friend because of the fact that she's literally changing my life when she's doing that so that's number one is sight and if you possibly can afford to delegate things like that that will just take some stuff off your plate then do that so number one sight number two is sound stop listening to the news if it sucks the life out of you as soon as this is sight as well I suppose as soon as you turn on the television it's like you know sucking the life out of you it's just negativity after negativity after horrifying news story after horrifying news story and yes I know that you have to know what's going on in the world but you don't have to subject yourself to it for every single moment of every single day there are households that I have been in that have just had the news running in the background it's a constant commentary of how screwed up the world is becoming you can just have your own little microclimate, choose what you take in, choose what you see, choose what you hear, decide what stimulation that you want to have around yourself and your family, and then minimise all the rest of it. Because honestly, it doesn't do you any favours. News channels are very one-sided. They are very clear that they are focused on fear and they can instill fear in you very quickly so if you get your your knickers in a twist about things that are going on if you feel yourself getting anxious if you have that anxiety kind of reading its ugly head it's probably because you're worrying about what's happening out there what's what could happen in the future often anxiety is just us not even thinking about the present moment we're just making up fictional scenarios in our minds about what could come but the news won't help that so Cut that out, cut that out of your life. And also, see if you're getting a ding, ding, ding to your phone every two minutes telling you that rapist one has been arrested, murderer two has been arrested, someone has been hospitalised, someone has declared war. All of these notifications come into your phone, your handheld device all the time. It's not so good for you. So just minimize that and just be aware of it because often we're, we think it's something that we have to do we have to be subscribed to all of that stuff and you you definitely don't you definitely don't and honestly I would say that it probably would make your life better if you take that out also with sound have a think about what your inner critic is saying to you have a think about what those that voice in your head is saying to you do you have an inner cheerleader an inner coach or do you have an inner critic chances are you have both but which one are you going to listen to most? Which one are you going to drown out a little bit? And which one are you going to listen to more? And are you aware of that? And are you doing things to silence the critic and build up the coach? Things like reading personal development books, doing what you said you were going to do, sticking to your commitments, having good habits will all help the cheerleader become louder and the coach become more and more silenced. And it's when you get off track with your habits and all that kind of stuff that the coach starts to get a little bit further and further away and the inner critic starts to take more stage. So it's easy enough to just wipe the critic off the stage, pull the coach forward by building those habits, listening to the good stuff, watching the good stuff and taking on fuel onto your body. Which brings me to the next element, which is taste. So if we think about taste, have a think about what you're actually tasting in your mouth and how that is fueling your energy. So things that taste really, really good, like ice cream, chocolate, pizza, they're not great for us, or are they? <laughs> However, things that maybe you wouldn't have on the top taste ranking tend to be better for you. And when you're having a think about taste, just realize that what you're actually eating, what you're taking on board has a clear correlation to how your mind is working. When you feel good about yourself, when you're energetic, when you're ready to go, when you're feeling mentally sharp, when you've got clarity, you are eating well. 100% no qualms, I am convinced of it. When you are feeling 
low, you're feeling low mood, you're feeling a little bit depressed, you're feeling anxious, you're feeling nervous, you're just, you know, things are not sitting right. Maybe you're feeling lethargic, maybe you're feeling sluggish, maybe you're just feeling low energy, probably because you're eating foods that are maybe over-processed or they aren't built to fuel you. Things that, like, like the pizza and the burgers and the sugar, all of that is designed to suck the energy out of you rather than pouring it into you. So we had Tanda Cook on this podcast recently, Dr. Tanda Cook, who is a naturopathic doctor. And she is incredible. If you don't follow her on Instagram yet, do that. She talks a lot about gut health and the importance of that. And that's what I have a business based in as well. It's, it's building a business through nutrition and skincare products and gut health is a massive part of that your gut basically goes from your mouth all the way through to your bum and a lot of people think it's just your stomach it's not it's the, it's the entire passage and it's lined with millions and millions and millions of bacteria good and bad the food that you eat things like sugar and gluten are and processed foods things like e-numbers and all that kind of stuff the food that you eat can damage the good bacteria and food that is good for you, all the colours of the rainbow, vegetables, fruits, smoothies, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, digestive supplements, gut health supplements, greens, all of that kind of stuff fuels the good bacteria. So what you want is a good balance of the bacteria. You want your good bacteria to be fueled and you want to not fuel the bad bacteria. So it's very important that you're being really aware of what you eat because that gut health and the bacteria within your gut has a massive impact on your brain. And the gut-mind connection is just overwhelmingly clear as soon as you start eating well or as soon as you start eating food that's not very good for you you can start to feel it immediately it comes out in your skin you can see skin disorders you can see you know maybe your skin's looking a bit dull maybe your things like acne if I eat cheese I can literally see it on my skin the next day if I eat a lot of sugar I can literally see it on my skin the next day because of the impact that it's having on my gut and then my body's trying to get rid of those toxins and then it comes out on my skin so it's very, very important. The best thing you can do for your gut is eat the rainbow, eat really good food, eat, take on board supplements that are good for your body, things like probiotics, prebiotics, and digestive enzymes, and just be aware of it and be aware that it's not just calories that you need to be thinking about when you're taking on food. It's how that actually impacts your mind, your energy, and the way that you think. It's very, very important. Also, you know, if you're feeling, if you're a tired mum and you are struggling to deal with your kids, you're becoming impatient, you're becoming snappy, your sleep is not what it should be, then you need to maximise everything that you can to build your energy up when you're not sleeping. Sleep is something that is obviously the best thing that you can do for your energy. For a lot of mums, that's not possible. So, the next best thing is look at what you're putting into your body, look at how you're actually feeling it, and then take control of that, and it will actually help you feel better mentally as well as physically. And that also is brings me on to the next part, which is feeling and experiencing. The same goes for exercise. I used to be someone who exercised to lose weight, to exercise to burn calories. Now I exercise because I know that it's good for my body, because I know that it will improve my mental clarity, it'll make me feel sharper, it'll lift any brain fog that I have, it will give me more confidence, it boosts my self-esteem, it makes you feel like a new woman. That buzz that you have after you've gone through a half hour of sweat is unrivaled anywhere in the world. And when you change the way you look at things, the way that you look at things will change. So if you're thinking about exercising as an annoying thing that you have to do, then it's going to be an annoying thing that you have to do. If you think of it as a magic potion that can make you feel like a superwoman, makes you feel strong, it makes you feel determined, it makes you feel capable of taking on the world, then that's what it's going to be. So 
change the way that you're looking at exercise and it's not always going to be comfortable it's not going to feel like a bubble bath but life is not a bubble bath and if you think of the way that you felt when you felt your best if you take yourself to a moment where you felt good you felt strong you felt powerful I guarantee you it wasn't a day where you had a lion you had a bubble bath you didn't do anything on your to-do list because being uncomfortable feeling hard feel, things feeling hard is actually where our happiness is linked we are happiest when we are building our sales we're building our comfort zone we're having we're seeing progress and we are experiencing a challenge that's when we're at our happiest so it, that's what true self-care is feeling things feeling uncomfortably hard hardly comfortable that's what you want to go after and that's something that exercise can place you in really quickly regardless of what your the rest of your life looks like you can do a certain movement for long enough and you will soon feel that uncomfortably hard hardly comfortable feeling which is when you know that you're growing mentally physically spiritually all of that is good for your energy so just make sure you're moving your body and also when it comes to feeling Make sure you're experiencing joy. What are you doing that's fun? What do you love doing? You know, maybe you used to be a dancer and you just don't dance anymore. Maybe start a dance class. Maybe you love writing and you just don't ever find time to write or you love painting and you just don't do it anymore. Something that I really love doing is colouring in with my little girl and I just sit in colour and it makes me feel so good, so relaxed. And it's just a moment of joy or a walk in nature when the sun's shining or a run in nature when the sun's shining and you feel like there is just more out there. The universe is bigger than you and you just feel this wonderful sense of insignificance that actually nothing really matters. And it puts things into perspective when you're out there in nature. And if you've not experienced that, for a while then go out of the door and just prioritize that because as busy mums we can be very guilty of just going hell for a leather one foot in front of the other just keep going you get up you do the school run you go to work you do your business you come back you do the dinner you do the washing you put them to bed and then you're flat out and you're knackered and maybe you'll watch a, a Netflix or two or, or do some stuff that you have to do in the evening because you've not stopped the entire day and you start again the next day this is your life. You're only going to get one shot. And this isn't a dress rehearsal. So if you're not doing things that are fun, if you're not loving life, then find a reason to do that. Put a date in the diary to go and climb a mountain or go for a walk or prioritize yourself, prioritize something that you've wanted to do for a long, long time. Because, you know, you don't get to the end of your life and think, Oh, I just really wish I'd watch tomorrow Netflix. I just, I just really wish I'd work a little bit harder. If your life was to end in seven days, what would you do? What would you do? How would you spend those seven days? Would you spend them with your loved ones? Would you go and do that thing that you've always wanted to do? Would you book a skydive? Would you go and do a cold water dip in the sea? Would you run naked along the beach? I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting anyone does that. You may get arrested. However, just go and let your hair down and have fun because so many of us are living like we have all the time in the world and one day the fun will come. It can't be like that. It's good for your energy to realise that the fun has to be right now. And when you have fun, when you're having that moment of joy and gratitude for everything that you've got and love for life where it is, that's when you get more into it. And that's when you pour more into other people because you're enjoying what you're doing. If you're just going through the motions, then something has to change. And if you feel like you can't change, if you feel like, you know, I've got to this stage in my life and I'm, I'm in my mid-30s, how would I possibly change now? I'm not qualified to do anything else. How would I start a business? How could I do anything else that I see other people on social media do? I would say that people have started later than you. And people who are much, much older than you are starting it now. There is no reason why you can't do it. The next year is going to pass anyway. The next five years is going to pass anyway. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to get what you've always got. If you make a change, then who knows what the next five years would look like? 
If you're looking at the next five years and you want to be living in a different place, if you want to be having different experiences, if you want to be driving a different car or going away on different holidays, traveling more, enjoying life more, then make a change now, take the reins, make a change now in your life that will implement that change further on in your life, whatever that looks like to you, because there's something, there's something in your mind right now as I'm talking about this that you're thinking, I need to do more of that, I really should do more of that thing, yes, that's, that's the thing, do more of it, I really should take that person up on that opportunity, I really should start that business, I really should write that book, whatever it is, just bloom and do it. It's going to feel so scary, but that is going to feel so wonderful because feeling uncomfortably hard and feeling hardly comfortable is the place that you want to be. And with that comes gratitude. Gratitude for everyone and everything around you. And when you're in a state of joy, if someone says something annoying or if you receive a bill that you're not sure how you're going to pay or anything negative happens to you, you're driving down the road, someone cuts in front of you, instead of slamming on the horn and getting road rage and getting angry and irritated, you're just going to say, do you know what? I'm grateful, I'm happy, all's good. It puts you in a centred place, it puts you in a better place when all of these things work synergistically together, when you're seeing good things, when you're listening to good things, when you're putting good things into your mouth and when you're feeling all the good feels, do you know what? You're going to feel good. You're going to feel so good and you're going to be so grateful for this moment. And that is going to filter into every aspect of your life. And the last sense, obviously, is smell. I don't really know where I'm going with that, <laughs> to be honest. If something smells fishy, don't do it. I would say, trust your gut. Trust, trust that nose of yours. Don't worry too much about the smell, to be honest. But... I hope this has helped you. I hope that you are energized from this podcast and this episode. And I just want you to prioritize your own energy, prioritize your own high vibe, prioritize your own feeling. Because when you're feeling good, wonderful things happen. You're a better mum, you're a better partner, you're a better wife, you're a better businesswoman, you're a better career woman because you're prioritizing yourself and you're prioritizing the way that you feel, which is the most important thing in the world loads of love thanks so much for listening and i'll speak to you soon